be said. I welcome everyone tonight in Jesus' name. And I pray there will be impartation in every life. I will never be the same again. Father, we thank you for your people. Thank you for our leaders, your servants, our pastors and preachers, our overseers. We thank you, Lord, for what you are going to do. And we pray, Lord, you'll make us more effective leaders in Jesus' name. Give us proper understanding. And let the understanding of your word lift us up in Jesus' name. Bless your people. Make us channels of blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Tonight we're coming to Job chapter 1. Chapter 2, chapter 3, as the springboard to what the Lord wants to reveal to us. Already you have heard the reading of chapters 1 and 2 and part of chapter 3 of Job as our teacher taught tonight. Tonight what we want to do is to look at Job. Look at the dispensation in which he lived. Look at the privileges he had or the privileges he did not have. Look at the believer today and look at the privileges and promises the believers of today have. And then we're going to compare everything and see whether there is anyone that can be another Job today. We're coming to Job chapter 1, verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also. Among them, please understand that was then. The question is today, after the cross, after Calvary, after the death of Christ, after the resurrection of Christ, after he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them on the cross, after he said, I see Satan fall from heaven, and behold, I give unto you power over all the power of the enemy. After Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, verse 11, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Now read that verse again. Will it so happen today that there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord that Satan came also among them. There's a different dispensation now. Look at verse 7. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord, and said, from going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, As thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect man and an upright man, one that feareth God and is choice evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job, does Job fear God for naught? Hast thou not made an edge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? That was blessed the work of his hand, and his substance is increased in the earth. Verse 11, but put forth thine hand now, and touch 
all that he has and he will cause thee to thy face follow the story let's leave job now let's speak peter let's speak john let's speak any of the disciples followers of christ after the cross will god say have you seen my apostle servant peter and then he tells all that and then satan will say does peter fear you for nothing stretch forth your hand and put your hand in everything that he has that cannot take place for peter after the cross i'm telling you something there are privileges for every dispensation and there are opportunities for every covenant actually job lived before the establishment of even the old covenant he was a righteous man in his generation he was perfect in his generation the lord god of heaven commended him yet his knowledge of god was less than the knowledge of abraham when he approached the almighty god the knowledge of job was less than the knowledge of moses when god said let me alone i will destroy the whole nation if job had been the one god addressed job would have said he is god he is almighty he gives and he takes away he creates he makes alive and he kill he kills but moses was not of that perspective moses knew his right and moses knew the opportunity and even when god said let me alone he picked up something from that if i don't let him alone he cannot do this and so he said are you going to do that remember what your promise abraham isaac and jacob and spare the people and eventually moses prevailed you will prevail look at proverbs chapter 19 and i'm reading from verse 2 proverbs chapter 19 verse 2 in proverbs chapter 19 reading from verse 2 also that the soul be without knowledge it is not good when you read the book of job that the soul the believer the righteous man today that reads the book of job that he be without knowledge is not good i say i'm reading chapter 5 Isaiah chapter 5 verse 13 Therefore my people are gone into captivity Because they have no knowledge Because they have no knowledge As we come to the book of Job In many ways his experience cannot be transferred Or imposed on believers living after christ's vicarious death believers living after the resurrection of christ come back to job and hold on to these verses and mark them in your bible job chapter 3 we're reading from verse 25 job chapter 3 verse 25 it says for the sin which i greatly feared is come upon me he had righteousness but he had fear he had uprightness but he had fear he had perfection in character in following after god but he had fear every time he looked at his property he was afraid maybe one day a calamity will happen 
and all this wells, everything will go. Maybe one day, my children, I don't know whether they have caused God or not. And every time he was making sacrifice, that makes you to know, he lived before the establishment of the priesthood in Israel. Because after making the establishment of the priesthood, is the priest that will sacrifice, not the head of the family. He lived way beyond the revelation of the power of God and the promise of God. And he said, the sin, look at what has happened. Children gone. That's what I was afraid of. I thought one day it might happen. And then he said, all my cattle, everything is gone. I thought about that. One day it might happen. For the things which I greatly feared is come upon me. And that which I was afraid of is come unto me. He had been thinking about that. And verse 26, I was not in safety. The Lord had made an edge around him. Even Satan knew. But he didn't know all that. He said, I was not in safety. Neither had I rest. Neither was I quiet. Yet trouble came. He said, I had anxiety. I wasn't at rest. I was thinking, this might happen. This might happen. This might happen. I wasn't at rest. And eventually now it has happened. You will be at rest. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take no thought for your life. What you'll eat, what you'll drink, your heavenly Father is thinking of you. He will give it to you. And two sparrows are they not so for a farthing, and yet not one of them falls to the ground without the knowledge of your Father in heaven. And ye are of greater value than many sparrows. Ask, it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it will be opened unto you. After Christ came, everyone that asketh receiveth. And Jesus said, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatsoever you bind on earth. Job did not know that. Job did not know that you had power to bind and the power to lose. All he knew is that whatever comes, we take. We don't understand why God has done this and why this is happening all the children go, but I don't, I don't want to complain God has given and God has taken away blessed be his holy name we know more than that today I've given you the key the Lord said and whatsoever you bind on earth I'm looking at somebody there. Anything that is negative in your life, you'll not stay back and be, you know, on the ashes and scrubbing yourself. You will rise up and bind that thing. And when you bind that thing on earth, it is bound in heaven in Jesus' name. And then look at this. He that believeth on me. The works I do, he shall do. And greater works than this shall he do because I go to the Father. Job did not know that, did not have that. I give you my name. And whatever you ask the Father in my name, I will do it. Job did not know that. Job did not know this I shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. And if you drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt you. You lay your hands on the sick and they shall... I can't hear you. And they shall recover. You speak with new tongues. Let's speak new language. Language different from the language of Job. We are more than conquerors today. I'm looking at a conqueror there tonight. You're more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. I'm looking at the Word of God with you tonight on the subject, on the title, Understanding the Non-Transparable Experiences of a Lesser Dispensation. Understanding the Non-Transparable Experiences of a Lesser Dispensation. The Dispensation of the Past, before the time of Abraham. 
the dispensation between Abraham and Moses, the dispensation between Moses and David, the dispensation between David and Elijah, the dispensation between Elijah and John the Baptist, and now the dispensation on this side of the cross, all the experiences of those years, of those dispensations, you cannot transfer to the dispensation of people that are now enjoying the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You'll be on resurrection ground. I said you'll be on resurrection ground. Understanding the non-transferable experiences of a lesser dispensation. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the adversity and perplexity of righteous Job. The adversity and perplexity of righteous Job. Point number two, the authority and the power of the revealed Jesus. Jesus was revealed and Jesus came. And from the beginning of his ministry, that revealed Jesus manifested authority. And he transferred that authority onto his disciples. He manifested power. He transferred that power onto his disciples. And so now, we're not looking at righteous Job. We're looking at revealed Jesus. And we're looking at the authority he had. And we're looking at the power he had. That power will never fail in your life. Point number three, the anointing and protection of the really justified. Really justified today. We're justified by the death of Christ, by the blood of Christ. And we're justified by the substitutionary sacrifice he has made for us. And since we know that he has done it already, you remember what Job said? He was talking about his Redeemer in the future. We are talking about our Redeemer who already died, who bore our punishment, who bore our shame. We are talking about a rede the Redeemer who has borne all our sorrow and all the curse. He has taken everything away. We are on this side of the cross he was on that other side far away from the cross and so we cannot bring the two people together job and the just job and the justified were far far away and the lord will keep you far away and as the east is far from the way so as he removed all those problems with us will not plunge ourselves into confusion anymore in jesus name let's come back to point number one the adversity and perplexity of righteous job righteous job i want you to underline that word righteous what do you understand about righteousness Righteousness at the time of Job. Righteousness now, after Calvary, the righteousness at the time of Job, everything he knew, every commandment he knew, he obeyed. And he was righteous. And God said, that righteousness, personal of Job, I recognize it. He disciplined himself. Everything was all right, upright, righteous. What do you understand about the righteousness of today? The righteousness now of the believer is different. It's higher. Because now he, Christ, who knew no sin, was made a sin offering for us that we might be the righteousness of God in him. The righteousness of God. That's the righteousness of a substitute of Jesus Christ is now imparted, imputed unto us. The righteousness of today by the true believer is greater, is higher, is better than that of 
Job's righteousness. Let's look at this. Number one, the adversity and the perplexity of righteous Job. Righteous Job. The adversity. What was the adversity? Chapter 1. And I'm reading here from verse uh, 11, from verse 12. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he has is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So, Satan was so happy. I've been looking for that for a long time. Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating. You know the story. It's been read already. Chapter 2. In chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 6. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. He is in thine hand, but save his life. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot on to the crown of his head. That's what happened to Job. But Job did not know. If you check up from your concordance and you're looking for the word Satan, you're looking for the word devil in Job chapter 3 all to chapter 42, you will not find Satan there. Job did not know. His friends did not know that the problem was coming from Job, they, from, from Satan. They never mentioned Satan. All they mentioned was God. God. Job said God was his problem. His friends said, no, God is not your problem. You are your own problem. God was the one accused. Job was ignorant of Abraham's faith. Job was ignorant of the healing covenant that I will not put upon you. All the diseases are brought upon the Egyptians. In his perplexity, he accused God. While his friends accused him, his knowledge of God was limited, less than the knowledge of Abraham, less than the knowledge of Moses, less than the knowledge of David, Less than the knowledge of Elijah. Less than the knowledge of Isaiah. Of course, less than the knowledge of Daniel. Less than the knowledge of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Since the time of Job, we've moved on. We've moved on. We're now at a higher level. Believers today have the whole Bible. Anybody with the whole Bible there? All the promises there will be yours in Jesus' name. Believers today have the new covenant. The new covenant that the Lord said, I'll write my word, both my precept and my promise and the prophecy, I'll write upon their heart. The believers today have the name of Jesus. And whatsoever you ask in that name, he will give it to you. Believers today have the blood of Jesus. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. The believers today have the word of Jesus. The believers today have the triumph of the crucified, risen Christ. Believers today have the revelation of Satan's defeat. Satan is now defeated. I said Satan is defeated and his power is not like it was before he was defeated. The believers today have the power of the Holy Ghost and we have the gifts of the Spirit. And one of the gifts of the Spirit is discerning of spirits. Believers today can pray and ask, where is this coming from? And then you can have discernment. But Job did not have that discernment. And the friends did not have discernment. Believers today have the possibilities of mountain moving faith. And if you will say, 
somebody there today. I said somebody there today. If you will say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, it will be, it will be done. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Don't go and sit down with Job. And don't go and lie down with Job and be complaining like he complained. His experiences are not transferable to people of today. His complaints are not transferable. His perplexity is not transferable. The suffering of Job is not transferable. Yes, there's persecution. But Job was not suffering the persecution of a neighbor and the persecution of a friend and the persecution of a religious person. He was suffering directly from Satan. That will not happen to you. And we cannot transfer the ignorance of Job concerning Satan to believers today. We are not ignorant of his devices. Job was ignorant. You will not be ignorant. We cannot transfer the inner conflict of Job to the people of today. Neither can we transfer the argument of his friends. They are not transferable. We know better. Now we can pray the prayer of faith. I didn't hear you. Look at Job chapter 6. And look at what he said. They are not transferable. You cannot act. You cannot talk. You cannot mourn. You cannot moan. You cannot complain like Job did. Look at Job chapter 6 verse 1. But Job answered and said, what did he say? Look at verse 4. For the arrows of the Almighty are within me. That's not right, Job. You don't have the knowledge. It's not the arrows of the Almighty. The poison thereof drinketh up my spirit. And she says, the terrors of God do search themselves in array against me. That was wrong. That was wrong. And you cannot say everything Job said in his ignorance today. He had a good heart, but he had an ignorant head. He didn't understand. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, oh, that I might have my request, and that God will grant me the, the thing that I long for. What are you longing for? Even that it will please God to destroy me, that he will let loose his sand and cut me off. You cannot say that today. You cannot inherit all those utterances of Job. Look at chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 1. Chapter 9, verse 1. Then Job answered and said, What did he say? Look at verse 13. If God will not withdraw his anger, the proud helpers do stoop under him. What was he saying? God is angry. No, Job, you don't have discernment. God is not angry. God is actually bragging on you. And God is saying, there is no man like you upon the face of the earth. And he thought God was angry. Verse 14, how much less shall I answer him and choose out my words to reason with him, whom though I were righteous, yet would I not answer, but I would make supplication to my judge. I will make supplication to my judge. Now, you know, the New Testament believers now will make supplication not to a judge but to our father in heaven for your father knows that ye have need of all these things and then he says if his son shall ask the father of bread will he give him a stone if the son shall ask for fish will he give him a serpent if ye know how to give good things to your children 
how much more will your heavenly father give you good things from that from this night good things for you wonderful things for you and then he goes on and on in chapter 10 look at verse 2 chapter 10 we're looking at what is said from verse 2 i will say unto god do not condemn me no job is not actually condemning you it's justifying you he told satan have you seen my servant job and he even said you are the best person that he has on earth he didn't condemn you but job did not know he said i will tell god do not condemn me show me whereof thou content contendest with me is it good unto thee is talking to god that thou shouldest oppress and that thou shouldest despise the work of thine hands is not despising you it's actually telling uh, uh, the whole world and the whole of heaven that you are the best one he has on earth shine upon the counsel of the wicked god what are you doing are you shining upon the counsels of the wicked job that's not right don't accuse our god like that look at verse chapter 12 verse 1 and job answered and said what did he say verse 6 the tabernacles of robbers prosper and they that provoke god are secure into whose hand god bringeth abundantly job how can you say that that the robbers when they go out is god that is prospering them and he brings into their hand abundantly but look at me here look at what is happening to me chapter 13 verse 15 though he slay me don't say that job god actually told satan you can take what he has but don't touch his life i still have a destiny for him i still have something i'm going to do that will surprise the whole of the spirit world and surprise the whole of humanity but job now is saying god may slay me god will not slay you he has no reason to slay you he loves the righteous and he loves righteousness he loves those who are holy he loves those who are righteous but job said though you slay me yet i will trust him faith he thought he had faith i'll trust him it's not working but i'll trust him it's not protecting me but i'll trust him but i will maintain my own ways before him he also shall be my salvation for an hypocrite shall not come before him. You are right in saying that Job, hypocrites will not come before him. And then he went on and on and on. I don't have time to read all the references to you, but now look at Job chapter 38. Job chapter 38. And we're reading from verse 1. And at this also sorry chapter 38 verse 1 then the lord answered job out of the one wind and said who is this job who is this where are you coming from who is this man that darkness counsel by words without knowledge you are righteousness, but you are without knowledge. You are perfect in heart. You will not sin with your mouth, but you are without knowledge. Get up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. Look at chapter 40. In chapter 40, we're reading from verse 1. It says, Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? 
What have you been doing, Job? In all those things you said, are you trying to instruct the Almighty, the one that is omnipotent and omniscient, that knows everything? He that reproves God, let him answer it. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer thee? I will lay my hand upon my mouth. Once I have spoken, but I will not answer. It says, Yea, twice, but I will proceed no further. Then answered the Lord unto Job out of the world. We look at chapter 42. I'm reading from verse 1. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything. I would have asked you. I know you can do everything. I would have asked you to take all these things away from me. I would have asked you that all these things that have come, we shouldn't have come to a righteous man. I would have demanded something. I know you can do all things, and that no thought can be withholding from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not. He accepted now his ignorance, the things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. Every problem, the Lord will turn it away. Let's come to point number two now the authority and the power of the revealed Jesus. What's the authority of Christ as it is revealed? Look at chapter 3 of Genesis. Genesis chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall, that's future, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. That had not happened at the time of Job. That the seed of the woman, Christ, will eventually bruise the head of the devil. That had not happened. That's why he had all that chance to do, all that he did at that time. But now Calvary has taken place. I said Calvary has taken place. Now that his head has been bruised, he cannot just do anything now with the disciples of Christ. He dare not touch your life. Look at First John chapter 3. When he eventually came, when Christ came, look at what he did. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. Look at this now. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, manifested on the cross of Calvary, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Did you say amen? amen? After Christ came, the works of the devil put him boils on Job, killing his children, killing all the cattle. The works of the devil is no more exalted, it's no more appreciated, it's no more prolonged. It's not something that God is okay, go and touch him, go and destroy him, go and kill him. Now, Christ has been manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Look at how he did it. We're looking at Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, after Calvary, 
after Jesus said, it is finished, everything now has turned around. In Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and, tell me, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Have you noticed that when Jesus Christ was here, the blind, the lame, the maimed, the withered, the paralyzed, the palsied, everyone, anyone that came to him, he didn't say, no, you are another Job. I cannot touch you. I cannot do any, anything. There's an agreement with, the, with Satan to torment you. And because your, yours is a special case, step aside. And then you would look at others and okay, I can deal with your own suffering. I can deal with your own sickness. I can deal with your own infirmity. I can deal with your own peculiarities and the pain and the plague because you are not Job. There was no Job. At the time of Christ, everyone that came, he healed them all. And there is no Job in the audience tonight. I said there is no Job in the audience tonight. He went about doing good and healing and healing and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. I am healed. Look at Luke chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 11. Luke chapter 13. And we're reading from verse 11. Look at what Jesus said concerning this work of the devil. Luke chapter 13, verse 11. And behold, there was a certain woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself 18 years yes because all those 18 years she did not meet jesus and so she carried about the bondage that she had since she didn't meet she didn't meet jesus and when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. You didn't say amen? amen. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Look at the conclusion, verse 16. Ought not... This woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, lo, these 18 years be loose from the bond on the Sabbath day, the day you meet Jesus, whether it is Sabbath day or the Lord's day, on a Monday, on a Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, or Friday, or whatever day, the day you meet Jesus, all that bondage is taken away. Look at John chapter 12. John chapter 12, verse 31. Now, this didn't happen at the time of Job. And you understand why Job had to go through what he went through? But now is the judgment of this world. Now is the prince of this world cast out. Now. It was at the time of Christ. He brought the victory and he gave the victory and he manifested the victory. Understand that? Now that that prince of the world, Satan, the devil, has been cast out, you cannot go back and invite him again to your family. You cannot go back and invite him again to your personal life. He's cast out and he's cast down. We're looking at chapter 16 of John. John chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 11. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. The prince of this world 
is John chapter 19, verse 30. Chapter 19, verse 30 of John. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, Somebody tell me out aloud. You can talk better than that. You can shout higher than that. It is finished. At the time of Job, it had not been finished. And because of that, Satan still had the liberty. If you put forth your hand, if I touch him, he will deny you. It was not finished at that time. But now, it is finished. Somebody, I said, now it is finished. Look at Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. And we're reading from verse 15. Colossians chapter 2. We're reading from verse 15. It says in verse 15, chapter 2, verse 15. And having spoiled principalities and powers, Christ has now spoiled principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. As you look at that verse, you need to understand. In the olden days, among the Greeks, among the Romans, when an army went out with a captain, and then he defeated the enemy, that is, the soldiers, the enemies, he will tie them up and chain them to his chariot, and he'll be dragging them. He will go through the city to show his triumph. And those uh, enemies that were conquered, although they were not killed but conquered, will be revealed and shown to the whole city. And they march through the center of the city. And those conquered uh, people, they didn't have any mouth to talk. And they didn't have any chance to come up the chain and go and touch anybody. And that's the illustration that Paul, the apostle by the Spirit, is giving us. He's saying that Jesus Christ has spoiled principalities and powers. He has defeated principalities and powers. And he has them on the chain and is parading them before the church. And he makes an open show of them triumphing over them on the cross. And so Satan and demons are not principalities and powers to be feared. We have victory over them. And we conquer them in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 14. Hebrews chapter 2, we're looking at verse 14. In verse 14 it says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also, Christ himself, likewise took part of the same. He took on our flesh, but without sin. He took on our body, but without sin. He took part of the same. That through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death. That he is the devil. And delivered them. That's talking about us, you and myself. And delivered them who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject unto bondage. Now I am delivered, praise the Lord. I am delivered, praise the Lord. In the day you are delivered. In the night you are delivered. No campaign for Satan. Don't campaign for Satan. Don't say when you're teaching. Don't say when you're preaching. Don't say when you're counseling. Satan is terrible. Don't talk about Satan that way again. And don't say, you know what Satan can do? I come to sympathize with you. I come to empathize with you. But I know that Satan, he visited me before. Why did you open your door for him to visit you? He will not visit you again. Look at what he has done. Look at what he has done. Tell me what Christ has done. Tell me what a victorious Jesus has done. 
tell me don't tell me the past old time power of satan tell me the present day weakness of satan that satan is destroyed from your life in jesus name look at luke chapter 11 luke chapter 11 i'm reading from verse 20 luke chapter 11 i'm reading from verse 20 it says in verse 20 but if i with the finger of god cast out devils no doubt the kingdom of god is come upon you the kingdom of god will be established in your family in your ministry the kingdom of god the will of god is that it will be done now on earth as it's done in heaven not that it was done in the time of job when a strong man armed keepeth his palace his goods are in peace but when he's stronger than he that's christ the strong man, Satan, the strong man, the devil kept his palace, but now is stronger than he shall come upon him. And what will he do? Overcome him. Christ has overcome him. Our Lord has overcome him. He taketh from him all his hammer. He taketh Christ in defeating the devil in conquering the devil in overcoming the devil take it from him all is among wherein he trusted and divided his spoil you are delivered you are set free look at jeremiah chapter 31 jeremiah chapter 31 you want to mark this in your Bible. Okay, I see that some of you, you've marked it already. If you have not marked it, mark this one. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and has ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. He has ransomed Jacob, redeemed him, from the hand of him that was stronger than he after jesus died on the cross and he said it is finished he conquered satan he bruised satan's head he spoiled principalities and powers he defeated satan and took from him all his armor wherein he trusted and he has redeemed the captives from the hand of the stronger, stronger enemy. He has now made an impenetrable edge around the true believer. Around me, there's an impenetrable edge. I can talk for myself. I have to preach it for myself. He has surrounded me with an impenetrable edge. Satan will not penetrate into your life. He will not penetrate into your family. Zechariah chapter 2 verse 5. Zechariah chapter 2 verse 5. For I, says the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire round about and will be the glory in the midst of her. Verse 8, For thus is the Lord of hosts, after the glory, as he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. Now he that touches you, touches the apple of his eye. He that touches you, touches the apple of his eye things are different now Christ has died on the cross it is finished it is finished now we overcome 
We're looking at First John chapter 2, verse 14. First John chapter 2. We're reading from verse 14. In First John chapter 2, verse 14, I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, not because you are like joke today, but because ye are strong. And the word of God abides in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Any overcomer in the house? You have overcome. Chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 4. First John chapter 4, verse 4. Ye of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Amen. Chapter 5, verse 18. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. Make it personal. And that wicked one touches you not. Say that again. Look at John chapter 14, verse 12. John chapter 14, verse 12. Things are different now from the time of Job. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works I do, shall he also do. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. He has made the sacrifice. He has finished the work and he has gone to the Father. And he says, because I've gone to the Father now, you will not be like Job, you will be like Jesus. The works I do, he shall do. And greater works than this shall he do. Because I go to my Father. Victory in your life. Dominion in your life. You'll not be lying down on Job's mat. You'll not be scratching, your, scratching yourself with Job's uh, whatever. And you will not be complaining like Job. Rise up. You are the justified man. The justified woman. Point number three now. The anointing and protection of the really, really justified. We're justified. And because we're justified... We are the just. We are just in the sight of God. And the just shall live by faith. The just will not live by ignorance. The just will not live under pain. And the just will not live under the attack of the enemy. You will live by faith. You will be victorious in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 17. This sign shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. And they shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. It says, They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Look up here. Those friends of Job didn't have this promise to cast out devils. They didn't have that. They didn't know that. Those friends of Job did not know they could lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. And the wife didn't know the promise if two of you shall agree, Job and Job's wife, if two of you shall agree as touching anything you ask on earth, it shall be done for you of my Father who is in heaven. They didn't know, but I know. I said, I know. Oh, are you going to, you have gone to primary school, you have gone to secondary school, you have gone to university, you have gone. 
higher than university and then you're still operating with the knowledge of the one in primary one you cannot do that that time is a long ago past era and past a period now we're on this side of the cross you're victorious in jesus name luke chapter 10 luke chapter 10 we're reading from verse 17 but he knowing luke chapter 10 verse 17 10 17 and the 70 returned again with joy you are returning home with joy you're going to the evangelistic field with joy you'll be a conqueror you'll be an achiever you'll be an effective preacher in jesus name and he said, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, and he is saying unto you, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. They are no more to be walking over you, trekking over you, but to give you the power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over and over some of the power of the enemy. Tell me, tell me. All the power of the enemy and now and, and uh, nothing shall by any means hurt you shout an amen. amen notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven hold on hold on these ones are greater than job but beyond that these people were only saved saved born again their names written in heaven they were not sanctified yet they were not baptized in the holy ghost yet the day of pentecost had not come and yet jesus told them that i give you power over all the power of the enemy and all those evil spirits will be subject unto you and how much more when you are sanctified how much more when you go through pentecost and you're filled with the holy ghost you're more than a conqueror we're looking at acts chapter 5 acts chapter 5 we're reading from verse 14 acts chapter 5 and we're reading from verse 14 in verse 14 and believers were the more added unto the Lord. Multitudes, both of men and women, is so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and led them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of, tell me, the shadow of tell me again but peter is not here the shadow of the shadow of peter passing by might overshadow some of them can i remind you the salvation you have is of the same quality as the salvation peter had the sanctification you have is of the same quality as Peter urged. The Holy Ghost baptism empowerment that you have is of much quality as Peter had. The intercession that Christ is making in heaven now, the intercession he made for Peter is as strong as the one is making for you. The power of the name of Jesus that came out of Peter, that same power is as strong, is as mighty in your mouth in Jesus' name. But you know the problem? You have a good cutlass. You're not cutting your grass. 
Another one has a good cutlass and is cutting his own grass. And you cannot look at him and say, his cutlass is better than mine. No, it's the same thing. And you know, there is somebody that has a car given to him and the key was given to him. Another one has a car that was purchased for him and the key was also given to him. That other one is driving his car and is going everywhere. He puts the key into the ignition and it is working. And your own key is in your pocket. It never comes out. Go back to the garage, warm that car, put the key in, you will move to progress. And so Peter used what is God. You will use what you have got. That a shadow just passed over them. And there came also verse 16. A, a multitude out of the cities and round about unto Jerusalem. Bringing sick folks. And them that were vexed with unclean spirits. And they were healed tell me they were healed everyone Ephesians chapter 6 Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 11 it says put on the whole armor of God it's now available that she may be able to stand against the walls of the devil and then it says for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, even if they have got uh, maybe degrees and they have got awards and they have got titles in the spirit world, we wrestle against uh, the spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that she may be able to withstand in the evil day. You all withstand? And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and, put, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, somebody shout, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to do what? Quench? How many? How many? I mean, talking about you, what you can do, what you'll be able to do. Quenching what? All the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. You are victorious. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, who has delivered us from the power of darkness. That had not happened at the time of Job. That's why Job went through all that, but now he has delivered us from the power of darkness and he has translated us on the line that word translated he has taken you out of that realm where satan can shake you and can torture you and torment you he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son is that talking about you Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 If ye then be risen with Christ Seek those things which are above Where Christ seated on the right hand of God Set your affection on things above Not on things on the earth For ye are dead That part that Satan could, could torment That one is dead that one that could be under the authority of the evil powers, that one is dead, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Your life is hid with Christ in God. 
your life is huge with Christ in God. As the Lord looks at you and looks at me spiritually now, what does he see? Who does he see? And where does he see us? Philippians, sorry, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. And has raised us up. He has raised us up together and made us sit together. Where? In heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We're justified. We're the just. The just are not like Job. In the present dispensation, we have anointing. I have anointing. The anointing that breaks the yoke, you have anointing. You have the shield of faith. Where we each, you cannot quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You have power to move mountains. And if you will say to this mountain, be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, nothing doubting, it will happen. You have spiritual weapon to pull down strongholds. And you have the mandate to fully represent Christ. What does that mean? You have the power of actually. Now whatever you ask in the name of Jesus, it will be done here and now. We live under a better covenant. And we have the new covenant promises and privileges. Justified. Just. Not like Job, but just like Jesus. We're righteous. The righteousness of Christ is upon us right now. We're risen together with Christ. We're ruling. We shall reign in life. And if there is anything that through ignorance, the devil treated you like Job, you shake it off tonight. It's like you're an officer. You have a uniform. Anytime you're in uniform, you walk free. And all those uh, miscreants, miscreants, or whatever they are called, they, they depart for you when they see you coming in your uniform. But this particular evening, you just uh, decided to lay aside your uniform. And then you're dressed in mochi. And instead of you walking freely and you go anywhere, when those uh, miscreants see you, they say, I well, want to torture somebody today. And then they come at you. But when you stand, even in your mochi, when you stand like a soldier, when you look like a soldier, and when you command like a soldier, and when you use the voice of a soldier, they'll say, oh, we're sorry, we're sorry. You're not the kind of person we're looking for. And those demons will tell you they're sorry. You put on the clothes and the garment of righteousness coming from Christ, and you put on the blood of Jesus Christ, you can go anywhere you're free. My brother, I said, you're free. My sister, I said, you're free. Now rise up and exercise your authority in Christ. You're not like them in days gone by. You're not like them in decades, decades, centuries gone by. You're not like them in dispensations gone by. Things are different now. Open your mouth and thank the Lord for the authority he has given you. For the garment of righteousness he has given you. And for the authority of the name of Jesus he has given you. And for the power of the Holy Ghost he has given you. And for the impenetrable edge he has given you. And for the victory, Calvary has given you. Open your mouth and say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I'm not like Job. I'm not like Job. I'm not like Job. I am different. I am different. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. And speak with the authority that you have. And speak in the anointing that you have. And speak with the assurance of faith that you have. This faith can quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. This faith will not make you an invalid. Will not make you an impotent man. Will not make you a powerless woman. This anointing will break every yoke in your family. And break every yoke everywhere. 
don't talk like Job, don't complain like Job, don't murmur like Job. Pass that on. Let that go uh, uh, away from you. And now talk with authority. And now talk, now talk with anointing. And now talk with assurance who you are in Christ. What you have in Christ. Where you live in Christ. What power, what authority you have in Christ. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Don't go back to the old dispensation. Don't go back to the old covenant. Don't go back to the old failure. You are the just of God. And the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Justified. 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 God is looking at you as if you have never seen. He has imputed the righteousness of Christ unto you. He has imparted the righteousness of Christ unto you. Take it, believe it, accept it, and live by it. And say, yes, I know. Yes, I understand. I have the righteousness of Christ. It's imparted unto me. It's imputed unto me. And talk in that righteousness. No inferiority. No unbelief, no crying, no mourning, no regretting, no argument. He has given you the key that whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. He has given you the power that no other power, evil power, will be able to subdue you. Power over the serpents and the scorpions power over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you you're not a coward before satan you're not a weakling before satan and you're not going all over with your head bowed your shoulders down your heart weak your mind trembling, being afraid of demons and evil spirits and even Satan, their master. You're now going with confidence and you're going with power. You're going with authority. Put on the garment of praise and put on that garment of righteousness. Be cleansed, be washed, be covered. In the blood of Jesus, let the word of power be issued out of your mouth. And the word of authority come out of your mouth. Don't say, I cannot. You can. You can. He's giving you that power to prevail. That power to overcome. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world the greater one lives on the inside of you greater than satan greater than the devil greater than all their magic greater than all their occultism the greater one lives on the inside of you don't cringe don't cower Stand right and stand firm. For the Lord will bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Make sure you are born again. Your sins are forgiven. Your sins are cleansed. And the righteousness of Christ imparted, imputed unto you is actively functional righteous practical righteousness positive righteousness prevailing righteousness victorious righteousness and then with the name of jesus in your mouth or the sword of spear of the spirit coming out of your mouth You'll quench, you'll conquer, you'll destroy all those works of the devil. 
Satan will not make your body a workshop whereby he practices all sorts of oppression, of attack, of affliction. Your body will be the temple of God. Reject them. Arrows, reject them. Affliction, reject that affliction. Anything coming from the devil, reject that. And stand in the authority, in the power of the name of redeeming Christ. The revealed Christ and the reigning Christ. Let him reign in your heart. Reign in your family. Reign in your home. Stand on the promises of God that cannot, that cannot fail. Let the name of Jesus be mighty in your mouth. That name cannot fail. Stand on those promises. They're greater. They're stronger. They're higher than all the threats of the enemy. Be bold, be courageous. Know what you have. Make use of what you have. May not always to pray and not to faint. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Importunity in prayer will be rewarded. Rejecting everything Satan does and accepting everything Christ has done will be rewarded. Don't put your neck under another yoke. The yoke on Job, the suffering of Job, the attacks of Job, the complaints of Job, the lack of understanding of Job, accusing God, God is trying me, God is punishing me, God is tormenting me, not at all. In the new covenant now, whatever a man sows, that shall he reap. If you have sown the wind, and you are reaping the one wind, don't accuse God. Go back to God and repent. And turn away from that which brings affliction to your life. That affliction must stop. That oppression must stop. That early death in your extended family must stop. There's the anointing that breaks the yoke. Let all the yokes be broken. Don't welcome Satan. Don't exalt Satan. Don't honor Satan. Don't flatter Satan. It's great. It's powerful. It's terrible. It's so wicked. Can do this to me. Can do that to another one. Why are you bragging on Satan? Say who you are in Christ. Say what Christ has done. When he said, it is finished. Don't brag on Satan. Don't brag on occultism. Don't brag on evil power. Think about your Christ. Think about the greater one. 
that lives on the inside of you. You brag on them, you fear them. You brag on them, you submit and surrender your life to them. Must not happen. You are the temple of God. You are not flesh of his flesh. You are not bone of his bone. You are a new creature in Christ. He died to make you victorious and triumphant. He, he died and he rose again to make you free and to keep you free. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. He's not that powerful, that enemy, to torture you and torment you. No more. No more. No more. Calvary has crushed the power of Satan. Christ has overcome for you, not for himself. Don't cry for the devil. Don't mourn for the devil. Don't surrender to the devil. Don't allow him to beat you. He doesn't have that right. Don't say, though he slay me, that's not the language of the new covenant. Be courageous, be bold, and stand firm and free in the liberty where Christ has made you free. In Jesus' name we pray. And the victorious servants of God said, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Every mountain you speak against must move away. Everything you bind must be bound. Every affliction attack you reject must flee away from you in Jesus' name. Resist the devil, what will he do? Uh, you, you know that verse, you know that verse. He didn't say, uh, don't, don't say anything now, but let me talk. Resist the devil and it will go from you. No, that's too slow. Resist the devil and it will drag himself away from you. That's too slow. But now, we are going to put him on the rock. Resist the devil. What will he do? He will flee from you. You are free in Jesus' name. Raise up those victorious hands. And you are not doubting anymore. You are not another Job. If anybody gave you the name of Job, change it tonight. Literally, literally, change that name tonight. I am not Joe. I am William. No, I mean your own name, your own name. I am William. I'm the defender of the faith. And I don't, I don't bow down for any enemy. 
I will not cringe before any enemy. I have overcome. I have overcome. You have overcome in Jesus' name. By the way, all the children Satan killed at the end, God gave Job all his children back. All the cattle that Job lost, by the way, Job got everything back. Everything you have lost, you are getting back. By faith, take it back. By the power of the Spirit, take it back. By the knowledge and understanding we have today, take it back. I take it back. I take it back. I take it back. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for every brother and every sister, every minister, brother and sister. Lord, I pray everything they have lost, give them back in Jesus' name. The courage they have lost, the fearlessness they have lost, the authority they have lost, the job they have lost, the experiences they have lost. Give everyone back in Jesus' name. From this moment, greater is he that is in every one of us than he that is in the world. You will go out and walk on the head of your enemy. And everything you touch will turn to success. You'll be more than a conqueror. You're a victor already. You'll be triumphant in Jesus' name. Every sickness coming from any direction. Lord, I pray, take it from your people in Jesus' name. Well, remember, any of our ministers, any of our overseers, any of our leaders, any of our elders in the faith that may be going through turbulent time, Lord, will speak peace into their lives. Healing into their body. Miracle into their body. And Lord, we pray you touch our leaders, touch our overseers, and transform everything that needs change in Jesus' name. Touch all our children. And Lord, whatever the devil is leading us done, and we are kind of ignorantly accepted every negative thing on all our children, they are cancelled in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray today, as we have got this knowledge, we will walk in this knowledge, operate in this knowledge, function in this knowledge, and you will go from victory to victory. You go from concrete to concrete. You will be healthy. You will be sound. Every weakness in your life taken away in Jesus' name. And anywhere, at any corner, any crossroad, you meet that old enemy. You will conquer him. Lord, put the power in every heart. The power in every soul. The assurance of faith in every heart. Lord, let them go and do exploits in the name of the Lord. What Jesus did, you will do. More than what Christ did, you will do. And the Lord will fulfill his promise in your life in Jesus' name. We well, thank you, Lord, because we know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray.